The sport of whitewater slalom is to some the ultimate test of canoeing ability, requiring exceptional strength, stamina and skill. The South African Championships were held recently on the Bushman's River at Escort in Natal. The competition consists of two timed runs over an 800 meter course over which gates have been suspended. The gates are two poles two meters apart, suspended on a cable strung across the river. The paddlers must paddle through these gates without touching a pole. This tests the paddlers' ability not only to negotiate the rapids, but also to use the river to their advantage. The course of 25 gates includes forward gates, reverse gates, which must be negotiated backwards, and upstream gates, where a paddler must paddle against the current. The competitors' points for each run are an accumulation of time taken in seconds, plus a 20-second penalty for each incorrect negotiation. These include touching a pole, missing a gate altogether, and negotiating a gate from the wrong direction. Many hours of training have gone into preparation for this, the climax of the wild water season. Supreme fitness is essential to reach the top. Slalom paddlers must also develop their technique to a level where the most efficient use of paddle strokes and the water is second nature. At the end of the second run, the lowest score consisting of time in seconds and 20 second penalties for each mistake is the eventual winner. Rowan Sampson, paddling for defense, has the only clear first run with a time of 194,4 seconds. This gives him a 21-point lead on his nearest rival. Robbie Stewart asked him how he planned to handle his second run. Well, the only thing I can do in the next run is to keep it clear and really speed up and hope, hope to get a faster time. Mike Shatter from Escort in second position speaks about his first round problem. Uh, it has gone gate 21 um, after reverse gate and I uh, seem to have taken it too far and well it actually hit the tip of my splash cover and that's how it goes, it's slow. I picked up a, a 20 on gate number 8 and then a very bad breakout at 18 and wasted uh, probably 4 or 5 seconds. 4 or 5 seconds is far too much to waste in slalom. Ralph George, the defending South African champion, talks about his first run. I, I try to go for a very fast run and um, when someone goes for a first run like that, it's very easy to make a mistake, which I did. On gates 16 and 17, I picked up two stupid little penalties. And um, then again on 21-2, tw another penalty. And um, this is what it's all about. It should be fast and clean, but unfortunately it wasn't that way. Alec Rennie, current Natal champion, had a dramatic first run. He reflects on it. Coming into gate 6, or rather coming out of gate 6, my paddle caught in a rock and the boat was already spinning and the boat spun over the paddle. I had to let go with one hand and try and wrench it free, but instead of coming free, it pulled me over. And I went down the entire first drop upside down and cracked a few rocks and bruised my arm a little bit. And then from then on, you know, I knew my run was out, and so I used the rest of the run as a practice. I got a silly penalty on gate six, and I lost my concentration and ended up going through forward gate seven backwards, which is a really silly thing to do and quite an easy gate. Jerome Truran, South African whitewater champion, picked up two penalties in his first run and is lying fourth. He talks about the course. Well, as a whitewater paddler, um, it's a lot easier this year because the gates are so much wider. And a guy like myself who keeps touching them, I'm still touching them, but imagine how many more I'd be touching if they were narrow. Do you think you'll be able to be clean on this run? Well, I'm going to try. I have to be. If I touch a gate, then Rowan at least has beaten me. And that's not mentioning Alec. He's going to come through on this run. He probably won't fall out and have a go at the cliff. And um, then there are guys like Ralph George, who can easily come through on the second run. You know, he's done it before, and he is the national champion. So I think the pressure's on. You know, everyone has to have a fast, clean run. A fast, clean run is what everyone will be looking for as the tension mounts for the start of the second run. Clear the course, please. Clear the course, please. Five, four, three, two, one, go. Sean Rice, a defense force and northern Transvaal paddler, is very fast on flat and wild water and is a slalom canoeing and surf life-saving springbok. He is capable of very fast clear runs. Will he do it today?
Robbie Stewart, course designer, talks about the course. I put the first five gates on the flat water to get the paddlers into their rhythm and to make up the required length of the course. When designing a solemn course, I try to make the course flow so that a paddler who can use the water does not have to fight against it, but can make use of the waves and eddies to negotiate the gates as fast as possible. Because of the big drop after gate six, I didn't want too many gates on the flat water. We see Sean turning relatively slowly to reverse through gate six and then thrusting his back into the eddy to turn him for gate seven, a forward gate set over the big water to force the paddlers through the big water. Sean adjusts himself through gate eight and we see his high telemark turn to pull him into the eddy and upstream through gate nine. The next gate is a reverse gate made trickier by being placed on the boil. There are spectators opposite gate number eight. Please move back. Competitors opposite gate number eight. Please move back. The following gates force the paddlers to ferry glide across the main stream. Had Shaw not lent downstream and hit the wave correctly, he would have been swept past the gate and wasted valuable seconds. Notice his wide left-hand stroke, which starts his turn into the current, and how he puts his nose into the slow water on the right to turn him for the reverse gate. Then comes a flat stretch where a faster paddler can take advantage of his speed, then into an eddy for an upstream gate. The judges are placed in strategic positions so that every gate is covered. The move from gate 17 to 18 proved to be the crux of the course. If a paddler surfed down the wave in the wrong place, he would miss the gate or lose time. The gate doesn't prove too much of a problem for Sean, and he surfs out and turns tightly for the next gate. Ralph George, an escort paddler, is an agricultural pharmaceutical rep and is defending his title on his home water. He is strong on technique, but mistimes his entry into the notorious gate 18, misses the wave and finds himself in trouble. Every stroke taken is a second wasted, and Ralph sees his title floating away. He not only wastes time, but incurs a penalty as his kayak pops back out through the gate. This will force him right out of the placings, and he will have to be content with the 14th spot. Rowan Sampson, another defense paddler, tries to better his first run score of 194,4, but incurs a penalty and will finish in the fifth place. Rowan has won the South African Championships previously, and was the top Springbok paddler competing in America in 1982. That's Ryan Sampson on the first one. Ryan Sampson is really on the first one. And Disaster for Mike Shattuck as he hits a pole on gate six with the back of his boat. This breaks his concentration and upsets his run. He will finish eighth. Watching Mike Shattuck. Jerome Truran had the fastest first run, but picked up two penalties. 
His concentration is evident as he negotiates the tricky gates. Jerome is the current South African Whitewater champion, and he looks set to add the slalom title to that. Coming through the centre of the court now, post number 58, Jerome Thurin. Member of the Nassau A side. Jerome is the Springbok Whitewater paddler, and he did win the colour in the last year. Rory Pennyfather, past holder of both wild water titles, is a springbok paddler from Peter Maritzburg. He wastes precious seconds coming out of gate 18. Springbok Alec Rennie, in his final year of agricultural engineering at Natal University, is a slalom specialist and won the Natal Championships a week before this event. Alec's highly technical style will earn him second place. It's interesting to note that Alec's lower volume kayak was faster through the flat water gates because it is more maneuverable, but was slower in the big water through its lack of buoyancy. Another Natal University student, Tim Whitfield, has spent many hours honing his technique and is reported to be exceptionally fit. Will the tension get to him today, or will he pull off the ultimate, a fast, clear run? The last competitor on the course is Peter Wise, captain of the Transvaal slalom team and a very experienced paddler. Peter negotiates the course in fine style. He is clear with a time of 204,68 seconds which will secure the sixth position. The 1984 Game South African Slalom Championships draws to a close. The judges correlate their scores, and Jerome Truran emerges a clear winner in a time of 182,71 seconds. He is presented with the trophy by Dr. Tucker, Mayor of Escort. Six and a half seconds behind.